Guys, we're going to open scripture uh, tonight, and this is what I want it to be all about. I I want it to be about this right here. Do you guys have your Bibles with you? (laughs) You may may not have, like, thought, like, this would be all about scripture. What else do we do here at Riverside? Guys, this is what I want it to be about, and I want to go into a psalm, uh, Psalm 46, to share with you um, to start all of this out, and I want to talk about Jesus uh, in Psalm 46, and Starting with verses 1 through 3, guys, the scripture says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Guys, this psalmist is vulnerable right now. He's vulnerable. He has has a a present reality of trouble. Guys, do we not feel vulnerable today? Do we feel vulnerable in this country and in the world and, and what's happening around us? The psalmist is vulnerable. Guys, he has a present reality of trouble and the world around him, it's being undone. And he uses these powerful metaphors for what's happening around him. It's just the moving of mountains and the seas are crashing in and... Guys, I think we're experiencing this too uh, in our world. But look look at the tone that changes as we move into verses 4 and 5. Guys, it's remarkable uh, what's happening here in the Scripture. Verses 4 and 5 then says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Guys, there, the psalmist is saying, like, there is this reality, this is happening, but so is this. He's looking at the reality and he sees it for what it is, but he's also saying something else is happening too. Something else is happening too. Guys, there is a river There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Think about that for a second. The psalmist is walking by faith. He's walking by faith in the midst of the turmoil that he's seeing and he's experiencing around him. He's not walking by sight. And that's a common theme that we see in the Psalms. He's walking by faith. You see, this is significant because there's currently no river in Jerusalem. He's saying there's a river. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, but there's no river in Jerusalem. What's he talking about? Guys, the river is a symbol of God's presence. It's a symbol of God's presence and a symbol of his assuredness of peace and of security. Guys, the psalmist, he's singing to the presence of God that he's experiencing around him and in his heart right now, but he's actually also singing for the presence of God. He's singing to the presence of God. He's also singing for it. He's singing for the presence of God. He wants something else that we see here. Guys, the psalmist is expectant. He's expectant. Guys, there's a future. Because the prophets, they tell us that there will be a new Jerusalem one day. God is going to restore all things He's going to restore all things. And in this new Jerusalem will be a river. It'll be a river of life. In the city of God, in the new Jerusalem. Guys, how do we reconcile this future reality yet to come? How do we reconcile this future reality yet to come with our moment-to-moment, day-to-day life now? What is it that makes that future reality, that future peace, that future security that he knows that the prophets say is coming How do we make that a reality right now? Jesus. (laughs) Jesus. Guys, in Christ, God's presence is within us now. We don't have to wait for it. That future reality is real right now in Christ. Guys, the river is there. It's there. We don't have to wait for it. The river is real right now. Because in Christ, Jesus, He gives us the living water. He gives us the living water that we desire, that we're desperate for in our hearts. 
And guys, from this river flow streams. Flow streams of, of peace. Streams of security. Streams of assuredness. Streams of safety. Streams of salvation. Guys, in Christ, there is a stream for every trouble. There's a stream for every trouble that we encounter. There's a stream for every trial. There's a stream for every injustice, every, every broken piece about our hearts. There is a stream for it because of Jesus and the living water that He brings to us. Guys, there is a river whose peace makes glad the city of God. There is a river whose salvation makes glad the city of God. There is a river whose vitality makes glad the city of God. Guys, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. This was the song of the psalmist then. Guys, this is the song of Jesus. The song of Jesus, the great psalmist. Jesus Himself. And this is for us too. We're all psalmists. We're all a psalmist in our lives. And this is our song too. Guys, we're planning a church. And it's going to be called Stream Song Church. That comes from Psalm 46, verses 4 and 5. There is a stream for everything in our lives, guys. And we're all singing the song. Guys, why now? Why now? Why not last summer? Why don't we wait till next summer? Why now? Why are we doing this now? Because we feel like actually God is leading us in, in this direction. It's been actually about six years since we last planted our, our, our last church. 2011, or right around 2012, Ridgeline Community Church went up to Souderton. It's been six years, and in that six years, in that six years, God has raised up leaders in Riverside. God has raised up pastoral leadership to go. God has raised up preachers, men to preach and to teach and to go. God has raised up men and women to lead worship, to teach, to do ministry and go. Guys, a meeting location has become available that is ideal for a new church plan. So as you can see, there's many factors that are lining up for a church plant to be sent. Guys, we believe the time to begin turning the wheel is now. We believe it's now. Guys, why Doylestown? Why Doylestown? Guys, the greater Doylestown area, now when we say, when we say that, we're talking about the surrounding townships of Doylestown. We're talking about Doylestown proper. We're talking about Warrington. We're talking about Chalfont and, and New Britain and, and Plumstead and, and Buckingham and Warwick. There is a population of 115,000 people within a five-mile radius of, of Doylestown proper. 115,000 people. The current churches are, re are reaching a fraction. They're reaching a fraction of that number. Guys, there's a significant town center in Doylestown. There's a local business community to serve and to make the presence of Christ known. There's people to reach in the Doylestown area. Guys, there's a growing college community at Delaware Valley University. Just a couple of years ago, the college changed their name to university. They gained university status. What does that mean? It means they're growing. It's a growing college. Doylestown is growing. The area is growing. And there's a need for a church in Doylestown. Guys, there's a diverse age demographic in the Doylestown and greater Doylestown area. You see, our desire is to reach anybody who brings, God brings to our door. But also, we have to be intentional about our strategy uh, in church planning. We want to zero in on a particular age demographic, and it's our ministry philosophy that the church, the capital C church, the big church, not just Riverside, we always have to be intentional and strategic in reaching the next generation. The next generation. That age 20 to 40, generation Y. Generation Y. We have to be intentional and strategic. You see it here at Riverside. We're intentional in trying to reach the next generation, and that's what we're going to do in the new church plan. 
And we see, what we see in Doylestown, there's a significant population of that age demographic in Doylestown, and it's growing. It's growing in Doylestown, in the greater Doylestown area. Man, guys, we have, we have a meeting location that's come up. This meeting location is the Central Buck Senior Center. We're going to give props to the seniors. God can use a senior center. Can he not? God used a movie theater for 13 years. We met in a movie theater. God planted three churches in a movie theater. Think about that for a second. That's crazy. In a movie theater. What can God do with a senior center? God can do amazing things with a senior center, and I know he's going to do it. Guys, he, he's made this available to us. Guys, inroads have been made with the staff there. The rent is inexpensive. The rent's inexpensive. We have a place to ourselves on Sundays. It's got a great layout for church. It's got a great layout for church. It's a great place to grow into and ultimately perhaps even grow out of. Guys, there's a large room for a sanctuary. There's a lobby for welcoming people, classrooms for kids' ministries, above average parking. There's average storage. Guys, there's a kitchen. There's an outdoor courtyard for fellowship. There's a covered patio outside for more fellowship. This place has it all. When I first saw this place, I was like, this is it. This has church screaming all over it. And guys, it's quickly and highly accessible from Route 611 and 202. Guys, this should be exciting. I want to talk a little bit about this concept of, of an empty canvas because that's how I see this whole process. I see this process as an empty canvas where we, we're going to do three things as a core team of this church plan. We're going to do three general things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to dream. We're going to dream. Guys, a church plan is empty canvas and we're going to have the opportunity to just dream cast vision, guys, dreaming about God things, not dreaming about us things. We're going to dream about God things. And we've already begun dreaming about God things. Guys, Doylestown is far enough to be its own distinct church and reaching a distinct demographic, but it's also close enough. It's also close enough where we can intentionally be strategic in a continued partnership with Riverside. With Riverside here. Guys, this creates a number of different ministry opportunities that we can get into at another time. Guys, the core team of the church plant is going to have an opportunity to dream about God things. Guys, what are our dreams for the kingdom of God? What are our dreams for the kingdom of God in this area and beyond? What are our dreams for his church? What are our dreams for this church? Guys, what's, what, what, are, what, what dream is God giving us? Guys, do you dream... Do you dream about God's kingdom? Do you dream about the church and what you want to see the church doing? Because that's we're going to have an opportunity to do that. We're going to have an empty canvas to begin dreaming. And then we're going to start drawing. We're going to take our dreams and we're, we're going to start drawing, guys. The core team's going to have an opportunity to just paint. And we're going to draw from God's word. We're going to make this the foundation of everything that we do, of everything that we draw Guys, we're going to draw what we believe the church is and what it looks like today, and we're going to take ownership of that, and we're going to search the scriptures together in a fresh way, and we're going to start painting, and we're going to start drawing in a new work for God. Guys, the core team is going to be able to just start drawing out core values, distinctives, creative strategy, ministry processes. This is exciting. This is what God wants us to do. Guys, then the third thing, after dreaming and after drawing, this is the most important part. Because if we don't do this third thing, dreaming and drawing does not matter. Depending. We're going to depend on God. This is a total step of faith for whoever's going to be involved with this church plan. Whoever's going to be on that core team this is a total step of faith and, faith and nothing less than that. Guys, the dreams and drawings depend completely on God. Guys, church planting, it's an experience unlike anything in the world. 
It's exciting. And it's a step of faith for everyone, but it's a step of faith that we all do together as a team. Guys, a step of faith, as Keith was talking about, it revs up our need for God. It puts us in a position to need God like we have never needed God before. But that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It causes us to depend on Him. Guys, steps of faith put us in a position to experience God, to experience God in ways that change our life and how we view Him. That's a good thing. We need more of that. Do we not? We need more of that. Guys, I want to share with you another scripture as we conclude here. Because that's all I wanted to do tonight. I wanted to just share with you some big picture things. I wanted to share with you some macro level things about our vision. And you're going to have an opportunity to look at some micro things, some details uh, on a website. And as we conclude here, guys, I want to share with you a step of faith in Scripture. Guys, this is one of my favorite steps of faith. Does everybody here in here have like a favorite step of faith in Scripture? No? <laughs> I do. This is one of my favorite steps of faith in Scripture. It's in Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 9 through 15. Guys, the Scripture, it says this. It says, and I bought the field at Anathoth from Hanamel, my cousin, and weighed out the money to him, 17 shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed deed of purchase, containing the terms and conditions and the open copy, and I gave the deed of purchase to Barak, the son of Neriah, son of Meshiah, in the presence of Hanamel, my cousin, in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of purchase, and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard. I charged Barak in the presence, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, both this sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthenware vessel, that they may last for a long time, for thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. Houses, fields, and vineyards shall be bought again in this land. Guys, the Bible is filled with steps of faith. I want to talk about this step of faith from Jeremiah. God tells Jeremiah to buy a field in Anathoth. Jeremiah is like, basically like, are you serious? You want me to buy this piece of property? You want me to buy this? You want me to buy this field? Because the Babylonians were camped on that field. They were camped on that field. The land had no value as they once knew value to be in Jerusalem. Guys, Jeremiah knew the Babylonians would soon utterly destroy Jerusalem and burn its fields. He knew that was going to happen. The title to the land would be useless because Babylonians would soon control everything. Jerusalem was on the verge of destruction. Complete, utter destruction by the Babylonians. And what does God tell him to do? He tells him to buy this little field. This little piece of land in Anathoth. I want you to buy it. To purchase it. Jeremiah, he bought it. He bought this land. He takes a step of faith and he buys this piece of land anyway because he was confident that God would bring Israel back because God said that he would. He said that he would. He didn't know when God would bring Israel back or how. He didn't know the details. He didn't know the details. But all he knew was that he would. And so he buys the piece of land. Guys, Jeremiah's step of faith was an investment. But it wasn't in land. It was not in land. The investment was in God. The investment was in God's promises. The investment was in God's word. The investment was in God's goodness. He knew God to be good. The investment was in his goodness. Guys, when we put our faith and trust in Christ, we are buying the land. 
We're buying the lands. We're making an investment in God's promises. Guys, we're saying, I believe your promise that Jesus' work on the cross makes me worthy. I cannot muster up the strength to be worthy of your name. But if you're telling me that what Jesus has done on the cross, that's what makes me worthy in your sight, then I'm buying it. I'm buying it. I believe. I don't know all the details. Sometimes I can't even understand it. But if that's what you're saying, I believe this is your word, and if that's what you're saying, then I believe. Guys, the step of faith in Christ is an investment in God's power. It's an investment in his words, in his promises, and in his abilities. And then beyond that, we take steps of faith in the work that we do for him. Whether it's church planting or leading a ministry, guys, there's land to be bought. There's land to occupy. There's real estate to make investments in. It's not just... It's not just church planting. Guys, it's so much more than church planting. It's in God. It's making an investment in God and what He's doing and in His promises and in His goodness and in His Word. That's what we're making an investment in. So I don't want you to look at it like just church planting. I want you to look at it like this is God. All of our focus, all of our heart, needs to be on Jesus in everything that we do. And it's going to be the same thing for something like church planting. Guys, there is land to be bought in Doylestown. Are we going to do it? Guys, tonight is a step of faith. I have seen this on my rearview mirror or whatever for years. Tonight is a step of faith. And then whatever happens tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be a step of faith. My wife and I, we don't know what to expect. Every step of the way, we don't know. But we're taking it step by step. And we're taking it by faith. And each little part of the way, we're just picking up some land. We're buying the land. In faith. In who God is. And because of His promises, and in his goodness. Guys, I want to share with you one more thing. There's probably very few people that, that love Riverside as much as I do. Very few people. Ezra might love Riverside more than me. I don't know. <laughs> There's very few people. God has done amazing things in my life here at Riverside, in my wife's life, and then collectively in both of our lives together. God has done amazing things. When we moved up here from Philadelphia or from Georgia, we did not know what to expect. We came up here for my career. God divinely takes us on a new path. But here's the thing. Guys, Riverside is not home. It's not home. Nothing about this world is home. Nothing. Not even a church. Not even a church. Because our home is in heaven. Our home is in heaven. So in the meantime, while we're here, we do the work of ministry. We leave if God is calling us to leave. We stay if God is calling us to stay. We go if God is calling us to go. We don't have a home here. We draw and we, draw, we, we dream, we draw and we depend and we pray and we follow where Jesus is leading and we take steps of faith. Guys, we do the work of ministry until the last dying breath. And only when that happens, we're home. So this is the vision. This, this is what's next here at Riverside, is church planting. Ezra's going to come up and he's going to share just a few details on kind of what's next. 
But we want you to pray about this. We want you to pray about ways of, of being a part of this. And you're going to learn more about that in what Ezra shares here. But we want you to pray about being a part of what God is doing next here at Riverside in church planting. Let's pray before Ezra comes up. Father, uh, God, I, I thank you, Lord, for uh, whatever it is you're doing, God. God, we don't know exactly what's next. You've given, us a, you've given us a vision. You've given me a vision, Lord. You have put it in the DNA of this church for church planting. It's right. It's biblical. You have put convictions in our hearts for church planting. God, we are walking by faith. We are not walking by sight. And Lord, I just lift up this night. I lift up this worship to you. I lift up this vision to you, God. And I pray that you move. I pray that you move through, through what we want to do here at Riverside. I pray for what we can do. Lord, and I, pray, I pray that you, that you work in, in, in a way that we know that you can work, God. You want to save people. You want to impact a community for your son, Jesus. We know these things. These are truths. God, and I, I, I pray, I pray that you do just that, Lord. I pray that you work in the hearts of the people here at Riverside and that you create a movement, God. It's not a movement, it's not a movement by me or it's not a human movement, God. It's a, it's a movement of, of, of the work of the Spirit, Lord. We believe you're leading us in this direction. And God, we're going to take steps of faith and, and just follow. And we're going to watch you work. We're going to see what you do, God. And I lift that, all of this up to you. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Um, man, it's, it's exciting uh, to see and uh, just how God has been working and developing. And I think it's true. Brian does love Riverside, like truly. And um, I was talking with somebody recently, and they're like, man, when he, when he goes off to plant, like what are the, what's the gap that's going to need to be filled? What are the, what are the things that, you, that he does that are neat? And um, without a doubt, Brian is the, the best at connecting relationally with people and connecting into discipleship. He meets with people all the time. Um, he is, he's so, he's such a great connector of people, not just to Riverside, but to the kingdom, to, to Jesus. And, and he pours himself in that. And I know that that quality is going to make him a phenomenal pastor and, and church planter. Um, because that's what you got to do, right? It's, it's, uh, it's one person at a time. It's one life at a time. Um, and so we're really excited here at Riverside. Keith asked a little bit earlier how many of you had been familiar with the church planting before you came to Riverside. Let me ask you a different question. How many of you have uh, ever been a part of or knew of a church that divided or split or where it got ugly and things went a different direction, right? Like a lot of us, we've experienced that. And um, the reality is, is that uh, nothing remains the same. And sometimes when people get really ingrown and when thing, people get really comfortable and they get really static, then that's the result of what happens. People start to wake up and, and, if, and if you're not willing to multiply, you'll divide. Um, but we really feel like God is, is developing leaders, as Brian has said, to be able to send them out. And so for each one of you tonight, I'm, I'm here to talk about next steps. First of all, you've got uh, this card uh, that you should have got on your seat. This will give you access to a part of our website that we've devoted to this new church plan. So there's a, there's a password on there. When you go to that web address, you put the password in, you can go in. There's a frequently asked questions page. There's a, they, they put a lot of work into answering a lot of the questions that you guys probably have. And, and, and my, my request of you is this. Go to the website, check it out. Um, also, you've been here tonight, so your vision carriers... So as people in the church are like, what was that meeting about? What's going on? I heard something about a plan or whatever that you get to positively impact people with the, with the right information about what it is that we're seeking to do. And, um, and uh, as he said, we really want to be 
strategic and intentional about this church plant. Uh, we've planted, we've been the sending church for three church plants. We've financially supported a bunch of other church plants. Um, but our hope is, is that we mature as a church, that we become even more strategic and intentional in the way that we do it. And so our hope is that this church plant will be the best church plant that we've ever done, uh, that we'll have the closest relationship of any church plant that we've ever uh, had, and we'll continue in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a more powerful partnership than we have yet experienced. And so some of you are here tonight, and you're like, I'm not even sure why I'm here, but I just came, and we're glad you're here. Some of you are here like, man, I'm really seriously considering being a part of that plant, and I want you to, to keep praying about that and, and, um, and, and be bold and take a step of faith as God's calling you to do that. Um, some of you may not yet realize that you're being called, but, but you are, and, and you need to, to openly embrace that. And, um, uh, and so there's going to be a lot of ways. You'll see on the website there's different ways of engaging with this. For every person in this room, and honestly for every person in my church, I hope that you will proactively commit to being a prayer partner for this church plant, uh, that you'll sign up so that you're receiving the information. Uh, that's that, that one, you can't even really hedge about, like, well, I don't really feel called to that. Well, if you don't feel called to that, you're not listening to what Jesus is telling you, right? Yeah, we have to, as a church, be praying for this church plant. Um, there's an opportunity to be a, a financial partner. And so uh, there's a, planting a church takes money. We've got to buy a sound system. We've got to, we've got to buy new equipment and different things. And there's going to be rental fees and all kinds of stuff. And so we need resources. And so there's going to be an opportunity to be a part of a resource team in addition to your regular time. You know, maybe if, if there were, um, you know, anyways, I won't get into the numbers. But um, any amount that you would commit to give uh, sacrificially to the church plant would be an incredible benefit to help them launch out. And then there's going to be a couple other levels of, of involvement. You can get involved. You can make a commitment to say, hey, for a, a period of time, I'm going to go and I'm going to help get this thing get off the ground. And my ultimate intent is to come back to Riverside, but I'm going to go help them get critical mass. I'm going to go watch kids while they meet. I'm going to go serve. I'm going to park cars or greet or whatever they need to give them the best chance of success as they go out. And, um, and some of you, Lord willing, will be called to that. And then there will be others who will commit to being a part of the core team that are going to say, hey, I'm going to go out. Uh, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm excited because it's an adventure that God has been preparing me for in my heart. And um, man, we as a church will celebrate that. Uh, we will be joyous about that. This is a great room. There's some great, great people in this room. And uh, while I would be sad to lose any of you from our church, I would be even more excited to know that you're going to fulfill a call that God has placed on you. And um, there, there's nothing that can make me happier than to see that happen. So um, as we move forward, there's the, the time frame is laid out on the website. There's a lot of things, and I won't talk any more about that. But um, uh, go on the website, check it out. If you have questions after you look at the website, email Brian, email me, uh, ask us. Um, and, and be advocates for what God is doing. Um, if uh, uh, As people talk about it, as people are considering it, um, give them a little nudge. Be like, man, yeah, you should really pray about that. You should really think about that. You know, you may have really good friends that, that end up going, or you may go, and you may leave really good friends behind. Um, and, and that's part of the, uh, the challenge, but also the, the joy uh, of church planting, that we get to see people doing things that you never would have thought they would be able to do. So, um, man, I'm so glad. We really appreciate you guys coming out tonight. And I love Brian's vision uh, for the church plant. I love his vision for tonight. He said, hey, I don't want to just have a meeting down in the fellowship hall with PowerPoint. Like I want, I mean, we did have PowerPoint, but, <laughs> uh, but it was prezzy. Uh, but I want to worship Jesus. And I know that that's what his heart is. And I know that that's what the heart of this church plant is going to be. And so if that is where they're going, um, we're excited to go along with it. And, and it's, it's really a we thing. It's not, it's not a them and us. It's all of us are doing this together. And Riverside will, will be cheering as loud as anyone uh, as Stream Song really gains momentum and starts to take off.